What is up guys, welcome back to another video. So last week we covered the advantages and disadvantages of circuit style training in comparison to reps and sets training. We have also covered the difference between a split training and full body workouts. I'm going to link both videos in the description so you guys know what is the best way to approach your own workouts. Now on the previous three videos, we did full body workouts in a circuit style. Now we're gonna switch to a split training and I'm gonna show you how to do it on reps and sets fashion. However, remember that you can always modify the workout and you can do it on circuit style if that fits your goals a little bit better. The split that we're going to be doing for this series is going to be pull, push and legs beginning with a pull workout today. We're going to be exploring all areas of pulling both in bent arms as well as in straight arms so we can also get some strength and some improvement in our front lever. We are also going to be working on explosive pulling as well as some very slow control reps as well as targeting our biceps at the end of the workout so we are making sure that we're targeting all areas of a complete pulling calisthenics workout. This routine works very well for strength and muscle building as well as endurance if you're doing it on circuit style you can also gain some explosiveness in your pulling as well as improving your front lever. I did my best to keep this routine accessible for everyone from beginner to intermediate to advanced however the secret is going to be in choosing the right progressions and the right number of reps for your own individual level as i've been saying on my past videos you can always lower the reps up the reps modify the exercises and even add weight to some of the exercises that allows you to put weight on yourself however i will be giving you three variations for each one of the exercises so you can pick the right progressions for your own individual level finally as always make sure you're fully warm up before we begin and without further ado, let's start. Alright guys, so let's begin. So the first exercise we're going to be doing is going to be explosive pull-ups. Now, we're gonna go for three to six reps, and I'm choosing a low rep range, just because when you're working towards being more explosive, after the six or seven rep, you're gonna start losing explosiveness, and you're not gonna be improving in that area. So you wanna work towards a number that after that number, you start getting fatigue, and just start being less explosive. So I'm gonna go for six reps in this case. I'm gonna show you first, as I said, I'm gonna show you three variations for each one of the exercises to work on being explosive on your pull-ups, but if you are a beginner and you don't have your first pull-up yet, I would start by doing a body rows. We did it both in the intermediate and in the beginner version, but this time we're gonna do explosive. What explosive means is simply pulling or doing the concentric part as fast as you can and then just lowering down. So the concentric part is the part of the movement that you contract the muscles. So we're gonna go as fast as you can go, and then you're going to lower down. So pull as fast as you can go, and then lower down. So if you're a beginner and you don't have your first pull up yet, and you wanna work towards being more explosive, I would choose this progression. And again, try to choose a progression that after the sixth rep, you start getting fatigue. I'm gonna go for explosive pull ups, and the two other variations is actually the same. Basically, if you're a beginner, maybe the bar is gonna get like to your chest line and if you're more advanced the bar can get all the way towards your core or even to towards your belly bottom you want to stop if you're doing this variation when the bar is getting like up to here up to here you are not being explosive anymore so again choose a number or a stop whenever you feel like you're being less explosive so let's go for six of those grab the bar your scapula here instead of going back is going forward like if you're doing like a muscle up Point your toes. Once you feel the momentum that you want to pull back, pull fast as high as you can and go as high as you can go. That's for one, let's go four, five more. So as you can see, on the first rep, the bar probably got all the way up to here, and as I start getting tired, the bar gets higher and higher. So for me, six is a good number, but again, if you find yourself 
losing explosiveness at the third or fourth rep. Just stop whenever you feel like you're not being more explosive. The next one is going to be tuck front lever raises. And the three variations that I'm going to give you is, first one for the beginners that, I mean, just holding the tuck front lever, it's hard, especially if you are a total beginner and if you don't have your first pull up yet, this is an advanced position to be in. So what I would say, instead of going for the races that we're gonna go, you're going to do the negative portion of that race. So instead of lifting up, you're going to help yourself with the bar, put your feet on the bar, then bring one knee up. From here, the only way you're going to support yourself is by bringing your scapula back into retraction, down into repression, so you can support yourself with the strength of your back. From here, bring one knee up, the other one knee up, and you're going to control the negative, keeping your arms straight. Now we're working towards a straight arm strength, and it will be vertical straight arm strength pulling, basically this motion right here. So if you wanna feel what the activation of the muscle is like, just grab the bar, keeping your arms straight, and pull it down, so you're gonna feel the engagement on your lats. And you also want to retract your scapula before you actually pull down, so you're engaging your entire lats, as well as your rhomboids, your traps, and basically your entire back. I'm gonna go for eight tuck front lever raises, and basically the advanced version would be full front lever raises, if you wanna go to Towards that, I'm gonna go for the intermediate version, which is tuck if you are on that level, or you can go to advanced tuck if tuck is way too easy. So grab the bar, both shoulder width apart. Again, scapula is coming down into depression, back into retraction. Bring both knees up if you're doing the tuck version. If you're doing the full front lever, keep your legs completely straight. From here, with your arms completely straight, use your lats to pull yourself up and become completely parallel to the ground. Then lower down, keeping those arms straight. That's for one. Let's go for seven more. Try to keep your arms as straight as possible. I know it's a tendency to actually bend your arms just because it's easier. If you start getting tired, you can go into more of a tuck version. one, try to hold a couple seconds here, try to depress your scapula a little more, and then lower with control. Again, that will be like an intermediate version, it depends on, again, on your level and on your straight arm strength and how much have you work on that. I didn't show the advanced version, I'm going to show it now, which would be basically full front lever raises, it is the same, but instead of being tucked, feet completely straight, you depress your scapula, you go up, and then you come down. I'm already tired to actually do that, but what I like to do, which is actually a tip that I wanna give you guys, is instead of choosing just one progression, maybe choose the hardest progression that you can do. For me, it would be the full front lever raise, and as you start getting tired, move from full, then to straddle, then to advanced tuck, or half a straddle, then to tuck, and basically, as you start getting tired, lower the progressions so you can get to the eight reps. But again, that's for a front lever tutorial that I know all of you guys want, but that's gonna come later. Next, we're gonna go back to vertical pulling, but this time with bent arms. We're gonna do two variations. We're gonna go for wide eight times, and we're gonna go for close eight times. Something that I haven't mentioned on this workout is that it seems like I'm doing it on circuit style, but it's just to show you guys the exercises. If you wanna do it on reps and sets, in the description is going to be the exact reps and sets that you would want to do if you are doing it on a reps and sets style. So for the variations, if you are a beginner, uh, I would recommend to go watch my beginner's full body workout, which teach you how to actually get to your first pull-up. But for the variations, just try to do negative pull-ups. Basically, jump to the top of the bar, and then control the movement down, trying to control that movement for five to eight seconds. If you are intermediate, try to go for eight reps of each, or if you can do more, again, do more. And if you're an advanced, just up the reps, or put a weight belt on and perform both of those pull-ups with a weight belt on. Let's go for eight wide pull-ups, eight close pull-ups. 
Let's go. So shoulder width apart, go slightly wider, grab the bar. As always, scapula down into depression, back into retraction. Pull your chin over the bar. That's for one, seven more. up two seconds two one lower down with control switch it up without stopping close grip hands right next to each other go up grab the bar pull yourself up for one seven more keep your elbows in the entire time bring your shoulders down so activate your back we got three more. And last one. Up, elbows in, squeeze your core, legs together, and come, slowly come back down. Release the bar. Again, if that's too easy, work for more reps or put a weight belt on and do the entire set with a weight belt on. The next one we're going to do is a straight arm again but as i said when we do the tuck front lever raises that was vertical straight arm pulling now we're gonna go for horizontal straight arm pulling which would be basically this motion right here here even though we're targeting our back a little bit it has a better emphasis on our real belt which also plays a huge role on pulling and even on the front lever and some calisthenics moves so the real belt is actually a very very important muscle so for this one we're going to use rings this time you're going to set up the rings like we did on the beginners workout that the lower portion is at your hip level you're going to grab the rings you're gonna walk all far back, and for the variations of this exercise, it's all going to depend on your angle. If you are a real beginner, just basically go completely uh, standing up and use your arms to, this is way too easy, <laughs> walk your feet a little forward, and you're going to pull, keeping your arms straight, basically you're using your shoulders and your back to pull yourself up. And if that's too easy, always bring your feet forward until you find a level that allows you to go for 10 reps, which we're gonna go for. So grab the rings in a neutral position. This will be pronation, this will be supination. We're doing a neutral grip. Walk your feet to a level that allows you to get to 10 reps. Be on your heels instead of on your toes. And from here, arms are straight, pull up. That's for one, let's go for nine more. Lower with control, shoulders back. So everything is in the posterior chain of your body. It's basically your back and all the muscles that you cannot see. If you find that to be too easy, always walk a little forward. Keep everything tight. Your core is tight. And your body is completely straight. one hold at the top engage your shoulders your back your core everything's tight your arms are straight and release so again to modify just bring your feet forward or backwards to make it harder again the more parallel to the ground you are obviously the harder the exercise is going to be next one is going to be again on the rings and it's going to be horizontal pulling with bent arms we've covered that in all past videos we did body rows with our feet in the ground for beginners we did body rows with our feet elevated for intermediate and we also did tuck front lever pull-ups for advanced now we're just gonna do a variation i'm gonna do single arm body rows basically a body row but with one arm 
For here, you can choose all the progressions mentioned previously. If you are a beginner, put both feet in the ground and use both arms. If you're intermediate, maybe elevate your feet. If you're advanced, go for tuck front lever pull-ups uh, or a single arm body row is still an advanced exercise depending on the angle. Or if you wanna go for one arm front lever pull-up, I don't know if that's possible. Maybe Osvaldo Lugones can tell you that. Go for that. <laughs> so grab the ring with one hand, walk back with your feet slightly open so you, you have more balance. And from here, if that's too easy, just adjust the level. Find a position that allows you to go for eight to 10 reps. I'm gonna go for eight reps on each side. So arm completely straight, your body's completely forward, not parallel, but forward. You're not twisting to one side, which is the tendency of your body if you are just hanging with one arm. So stabilize yourself, your shoulder is going to go back into retraction, down into depression, like a normal body roll. From here, you're going to pull, and you're going to twist to a neutral grip. And then you go back to a pronated grip. That was for one, let's go for seven more. Try to focus on the back, like engage your back first, instead of using too much of the bicep. So to focus more on your back. Lower with control, two more. Scapula first. Pull from your elbow, not from your hand. And last one. Pull, hold, one, two, and release. Now switch hands, grab it with the left this time. Walk back, find a spot that you can go for A reps. Go on your heels instead of on your toes. First thing is going to be your shoulder back into retraction, down into depression. Let's go for eight reps. One, two, easy. Forward. Two. Make sure you're extending your arm completely. Even protract your scapula a little bit, then retract, depress, and pull up. And last one, eight, hold for like two seconds, one, two, and release. Whew. So again, that was horizontal pulling. I think we covered a lot of horizontal pulling, the body row, feet on the ground, elevated, tuck front lever pull up. Choose a progression that is according to your goals and also according to your level. If you're working towards front lever, go for tuck front lever pull ups. But if you're working towards developing your back and developing your rhomboids, then go for regular body rows. Next one is going to be again on this bar. We're gonna go back to vertical pulling, but this time, instead of doing a pull-up, we're gonna do a chin-up, which basically, instead of putting your hands in pronated position, we're gonna supinate our hands for the chin-up, and we're only going to be doing one rep, but it's going to be a, a slow rep. So when we did uh, the explosive pull-ups, we were working on type two muscle fibers, which is the fast twitch muscle fibers, which makes you be more explosive. But now that we're gonna do super slow rep, we're gonna be working on type one muscle fiber, which is the slow twitch muscle fiber. I'm going to go for 20 seconds coming up, 20 seconds hold at the top, and 20 seconds coming down. Now, that's a little bit challenging, and that's more towards the advanced level. So if you are an intermediate, Start with 10, 10, and 10. See if you can go for 15, 15, 15. And if you are a beginner, what I would just do is just do chin up negative. Again, as a pull up, just jump to the top and then try to control that negative for five to eight seconds. So I'm gonna go for 20, 20, 20. Hopefully I can make it. Let's go. Arms, shoulder width apart. Your hands are going to be in a supinated position. Grab the bar. Now, let me watch the clock. Start coming up now. So if you're doing 20 seconds with me, once you get to 10 right now, you should be at 90 degree angle. Keep coming up. Five more seconds. Keep everything tight. Two more seconds, get to the top and squeeze everything in and hold for 20 seconds. Try to breathe. Try to take pressure out of your biceps by sending your shoulders and elbows back. 
So you also engage your back. Almost there. Start coming down. That is 10 seconds. You should be at 90 degree. If you're doing 20 with me. Five more seconds. My fingers are sleeping. Three, two, one. Whew. All right, I think that was like 19 seconds. Grip is actually my weak link, the muscle that gets tired before everything else. So I think that's an amazing exercise to actually find your weaknesses on your pulling. For some people, it might be the biceps. For other people, it might be the forearms, which is your grip, maybe the fingers, or it could, it could mean the back, which is very rare just because your back has a lot more strength than your biceps and your forearms all combined. Finally, we're gonna work, as I said, on our biceps. We're gonna do ring curls. So variations for this is, if you're advanced, go for single arm ring curl. So go back. Again, your feet are about shoulder width, a little bit wider. The hand right here is going to be not pronated, not neutral, but supinated. And the difference between a row and a ring curl is that your elbow is going to remain exactly at that position. You're not gonna bring it down when you, when you bring the ring towards, towards your forehead. So this is how it looks, basically. That might be like way too easy. So you can adjust the angle to make it a little bit harder. But if you find yourself doing this, that means that the progression is like way, way, way too hard for you. And you're just compensating with your back to actually pull yourself up. You wanna keep the elbow always at the same angle and you wanna have it perpendicular to your torso, basically a 90 degree angle, and the elbow doesn't move from that position. You bring the ring towards your forehead. Something that can help is putting one hand here and just bringing the ring towards your head. Make sure you're doing the same amount of reps in both sides if you are doing single arm ring curls. I'm gonna go for both arms. And again, if you're a beginner, go really, really back and just prepare your body for the movement. It's a really, really challenging movement. Some people think that it's easy, but when you see them doing is they do this, and basically they're using their back and everything, and they're not doing the exercise correctly. So find a spot that really allows you to target the bicep only. So from here, find that spot, supinate your hands, elbows, stay where they are. You do, your scapula is going to be neutral. You don't want to be completely retracted, but you also don't want to be protracted right here. Your scapula is going to be neutral. Keep everything tight, your arms are straight. Pull the rings towards your forehead and extend your arms completely. That's for one, go for nine more. Squeeze your biceps once you get to the top. Lower down with control, stretch the bicep completely. Pull it back up, squeeze, core is engaged as well. Release with control. We got three more. And last one. Pull it up, squeeze everything in, and release. Whew. So, there you have it, guys. This is what I would call a complete pulling workout for calisthenics, just because we're targeting all angles, both for straight arms, both for bent arms, vertical, horizontal, and basically all angles, including the biceps that we just did. Again, this is a routine that can be adjusted to all levels. Modify the exercises to your level, lower the reps, up the reps, put weight on yourself if you want to. Again, you can choose between circuit style training and reps and sets fashion. I'm going to leave in the description all the information to approach both of those methods. If you're doing reps and sets, how many sets and how many reps. And if you're doing circuit style, how many rounds, how much you need to rest, etc. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to get a big thumbs up to support the channel. I want to make an announcement that uh, Saturno Movement Apparel is going to come out very, very soon, as well as equipment. We have joggers, we have t-shirts, you have seen it on the past videos. We also have yoga mats, yoga blocks, and many, many other surprises that I don't want to reveal yet, but stay tuned for that. 
And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any content in the future. Leave your comments and ideas on the comment section down below. And as always, guys, I'll see you all next week.